In this video, we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head matchup between the Lennox SL25 XPV as well as the Carrier Infinity 24 HP. These are both variable speed systems. We're going to be talking about their various efficiency ratings. We're going to talk about which systems qualify for the heat pump tax credits and in which regions they qualify for the tax credits based on which systems perform better as heat pumps in cold climates versus which ones perform better in heating only climates from an air conditioning perspective because a heat pump is just an air conditioner with a reversing valve, which means that these systems perform both the function of heating as well as cooling. And if you're tuning into this channel for the first time and you haven't done so already, please smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. So if you're in the market for HVAC system replacement and want to take advantage of a lot of the review videos that we put out where we do head to head matchups between the different manufacturers, make sure you're subscribed to stay up to date on those as we drop that content on a very regular basis. So that being said, let's just dive right in and get started talking about both of these systems. And what I want to start with is basically a high level overview of what these systems have in common. Now, both of these are variable speed heat pumps. What that means is that let's say you have a heat pump or an air conditioner that's 10 or 15 years old. Chances are you have a single stage or a two stage system. But the bottom line is that most systems, right, that are older systems, they're a single stage system. They function more in the way that a light switch does in the sense that they're either on or it's off. Whereas in, in inverter or a variable speed system, which again, both these systems are inverters and variable speed systems, they ramp up and down along a continuum similar to how a car motor works. And as a result, that's how they maintain efficiency. And so the difference between these systems is that imagine if every time you got in your car, you either slammed on the gas or slammed on the brake. Bottom line is you wouldn't get very good gas mileage. The same thing is true with your air conditioning, except we're used to having single stage systems that either come on. And sometimes if you have a really old system, System, you might be used to the lights in your house flickering. The reason that happens is because there's a huge amount of power draw by your compressor when it first kicks on. In inverter systems like this, that actually goes away. So if you're used to what I just talked about where the lights flicker, that can also be fixed with like a hard start kit, which is just a basic, it's a start capacitor with a relay that basically just assists the system on startup. That is not needed on these inverter systems because the inverter board is essentially functioning as a hard start kit. And when these systems first kick on, they're kicking on at a fraction of their full capacity. So these systems might come on at 10% or 20% capacity when they first start up, and then they ramp up from there along a continuum and maintain a maximum efficiency. So number one reason to buy either of these systems, either of these inverters, is going to be efficiency, as well as the fact that when they first kick on, they're going to be coming on at a lower capacity. Now, an added benefit of this, and it's really honestly, in my opinion, the biggest selling point, as the HVAC guy, we're always dealing more with comfort than anything else, right? People care about efficiency, but the biggest thing we get customers that are interested in is basically having a more comfortable home. And one of the ways to do that is to reduce sound that comes from your HVAC and inverter systems like this, because they run on a variable speed basis, they're going to ramp up and down along a continuum, which means that when they first kick on, they're actually a lot quieter as well. So now that we've kind of set the groundwork for what the difference is between these systems and some of the other systems on the market, let's take a look at some of the efficiency ratings. Now, as you can see on the carrier system, the SEER 2 rating is up to 23. The EER 2 rating is up to 14 and the HSPF 2 rating is up to 10.5. Sound level says it's as low as 51 decibels. That is pretty quiet. And to compare that with this particular system, the SEER rating goes up to 23 on the SEER 2 and HSPF 2 is up to 10.3. So they're basically, uh, from an efficiency standpoint, they're basically neck and neck, right? This They're both up to 23 and then the HSPF2 rating is ever so slightly higher on the carrier system. However, one thing that is noticeable is that this decibel rating is actually a little bit lower on the carrier system. And when we look at, this is the literature from the Lennox product, when we look at the sound decibel rating for these particular this particular system, you can see this number means two ton all the way up to five ton. We can see that the total sound rating is either on the minimum, it's either 59, 55, 59, or 66, depending on the tonnage of the system. And so it looks like the carrier is going to be a little bit quieter. So if you're looking for the quietest system, technically you'd want to go with a side discharge product because all or most side discharge inverter systems like the Dyke and Fit are going to be substantially quieter because they are a side discharge inverter product. This system is going to be a step above that in terms of they're going to be a little noisier, but not much. They're very quiet. It's just if you're looking for the absolute quietest system, side discharge products like the Dyke and Fit, 
which I'll show you a picture of that so you can see what that looks like. But it's basically a side discharge. This is kind of what a side discharge system looks like. So it is a smaller footprint and there's pros and cons to these systems. They're actually not quite as efficient as these as this Infinity 24 system. But if you're more concerned with sound and you want a space saving application, this might be a better solution for you. But bottom line is, like I said, I just like to touch on, give you kind of a high level overview. So they're basically neck and neck in terms of energy efficiency. But what about tax credit? Well, when you, in order to qualify for a tax credit, there's a couple things that have to happen. And I'll make sure to link the Energy Star link in the description below so you can look this up for yourself. But basically what you can see when you look at this carrier Infinity 24 HP or this Lennox SL25 XPV. And so as you can see, both these systems have the cold climate designation. They also have this tax credit eligibility next to them. However, you can see the carrier Infinity system basically qualifies what it looks like as it says on the heating capacity going up to five tons. So it looks like the two through five ton systems all qualify on the Carrier 24 series. Whereas if you look at the Lennox system, the Lennox system is only the two and the three ton systems that qualify for both heating and cooling. Now, if you're curious on whether or not how to find out whether or not a system qualifies, you can basically click on this tax credit eligibility button and it's gonna take you to this page right here. And as you can see, it says heat pumps are either ducted heat pumps. There's also rebates on ductless systems Systems, which we're not talking about in this video, but it depends on whether you live in the north or the south. And so in order to qualify in the north, these systems are going to be more geared towards a heating application, meaning they're more efficient from a heating perspective. And in order to do that, they have to maintain a COP of 1.75, which stands for coefficient of performance. And they have to maintain that minimum COP at five degrees Fahrenheit. In addition, they have to maintain at least 70% of their capacity at 47 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, you don't need to remember that information because it's not that important, but that's how they determine whether or not something qualifies as a cold climate heat pump and whether or not it qualifies for a rebate in these colder blue states compared to whether or not it qualifies for a rebate in these southern states. Because in order to qualify in these southern states, it has to do with SEER 2 ratings, EER 2 ratings, as well as HSPF 2 ratings. And so that's how these systems hit those eligibility requirements. And if you're curious on what specific systems qualify, right now you can go to this, if you scroll down here and clicked on explore models, you can actually plug in a specific model. Like if we take some of the, if we look up this particular model number, which is for the carrier system. And sometimes it's a little finicky when you plug that in, but it'll normally pull up all the matchups that match that specific carrier product. And then it will tell you which systems qualify. And you can even search for the manufacturer like carrier in this case. And then based on the series, if you look at infinity, it might pull it up based on that because that's their Infinity series. But again, sometimes it's kind of finicky when trying to use this to navigate which systems qualify. But this is the 18 AVS and there's also the 24 HP. And so if you want to see which particular, you can see this Infinity 24 HP. If we plug this in, that'll kind of narrow it down to that particular model number. And because literally when you're typing it in, if you type in one digit off or don't put a space or something, it, it won't pull it up, which is kind of annoying. But you can see these some of these systems are eligible in the south and some are eligible in the north. And that's going to be based on the outdoor unit model number, as well as the indoor unit model number, as well as the furnace that it's paired with, if it's paired with a furnace or if it's paired with an indoor air handler. So that's just something to keep in mind. And as you can see, there's literally a thousand different matchups or combinations of different coils and different condensers to get different ratings and matchups needed in order to qualify for that rebate. But at a glance, basically the bottom line is that the carrier system does qualify for more rebates on more tonnages. So like if you needed a rebate on a five ton system for cooling in a hot climate, like for example, one of these Southern states, like in the desert in California or in Arizona or someplace in Texas, then the carrier system might be a better option for that purpose. Whereas as these land systems, the two through three ton systems will qualify for both heating climates as well as cooling climates. But that's just some food for thought on these particular systems. Now I'm going to go through some more of the specifications that both these systems kind of share to give you kind of a head to head matchup between the two. But before we do that, if you haven't done so already, again, please smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home and subscribing is a free way you can show support for the channel if you found this content helpful as well as a way to stay up 
up to date on the latest in HVAC trends and new equipment that's coming to the market. So the other thing that both these systems share is they both have what's called, because they're variable speed systems, these both have a electronic expansion valve. And if we're looking at the outdoor unit on this Lennox system, you can see it has an EXV or an EEV. And what that means is there's basically three ways you're going to vary or control the flow of refrigerant inside a system. One is with a fixed metering device, like a piston restrictor. Those are old, very inefficient. We still use those in like basic systems when people just want the most basic equipment because they are simple and reliable, but you're just losing on efficiency when you go that route. Nine times out of 10, we're at least putting in a TXV, which stands for a thermostatic expansion valve. And the difference between a TXV and an EEV or an EXV, or an, which stands for electronic expansion valve, is that a TXV is basically the analog analog version, whereas an EXV or EEV is the digital version. And that controls the flow of refrigerant at a much more precise level. So when the system first kicks on, it basically just opens ever so slightly to allow a little a bit of refrigerant into the coil. And it does it in unison with the a signal from the compressor, the inverter board, and the thermostat. So basically the indoor unit, the fan, everything's working in unison. And that's how it, number one, maximizes your efficiency. Number two, maximizes comfort because it really pinpoints its effectiveness in terms of how well it removes heat or transfers heat in your home. And number three is that it's just absolutely the quietest way because that EEV is opening up just ever so slightly. It's working in unison with a variable speed compressor. So when the system first kicks on, it's not coming on at 100% capacity like a single stage system. And therefore it's going to be more comfortable because it's going to be quieter and you're going to be more comfortable inside because it's better at removing heat from your home or adding heat to your home if you're running this as a heat pump in the winter. And so those are just some things to consider. Both these systems have the ability to have an electronic expansion valve on the carrier product. Instead of having the electronic expansion valve on the outdoor unit, it's actually going to be on the coil or your indoor unit. So whether that's the evaporator coil like this or a fan coil, if you have a an air handler type setup. So that's just something to consider. And one last thing that we want to touch on is warranty. Now, both of these systems qualify for a 10 year parts warranty that's on the compressor as well as the unit itself so they're basically neck and neck when it comes to warranty and the big thing we put out another video that sometimes gets some controversial comments where people think you know we get a lot of hate for it sometimes but i made a video where you know brand doesn't matter and what i mean by that the caveat is that brand does matter but it's with the respect that we always recommend whoever you are hiring to install the hvac is going to be the biggest determining factor in whether or not your system works well there are flu between the different brands where yes, every major manufacturer like Train or Carrier or Lennox or Ream, anyone, they've all had recalls at some point. They've all had manufacturing defects at some point that we as contractors have to go in and then fix after the fact. And that's okay. So my perspective on brand is that it really does come down to installation quality. And so when I say brand doesn't matter, the big caveat to that is that brand doesn't matter as long as you're choosing a big name brand because you're going to have a company like Carrier has been around 100 years. Lennox has been around just as long or similar. So as long as you're choosing a big name brand where you're going to have customer support, there's going to be a dealer network that can support the product and you're going to be in good hands. That's why we primarily sell Daikin. We don't even sell Carrier Lennox, at least as of the filming of this video. So I don't have a lot of allegiance to either of these brands, but in my opinion, you couldn't go wrong with either of these. The reason we have leaned towards Daikin is just because they have a 12 year parts warranty and a, a little bit better compressor guarantee than the competitors. But if as long as you're choosing a reputable contractor that's going to do a good job on the installation, then you will be in good shape with most of these major brands that are on the market. And if you happen to be in the market for HVAC system replacement, or if you just recently moved and you need a permanent HVAC company to take care of your regular maintenance and service, click the link in the description below to be connected with a local contractor in your area. We've actually teamed up with a handpicked group of contractors nationwide that maintain the highest customer service ratings on Google, as well as technical excellence. So if you've watched this show and you thought, wow, I'd really like to work with these guys, but it's too bad that they only service a few select areas. I feel you. And that's why we've decided to partner with the best local contractors nationwide in your area, some of which have even been featured on our show. This way, you can find a contractor that's familiar with the latest technology, whether that's cold weather heat pumps or inverter driven heat pumps that work well on battery backup or solar or infrared radiant heat or any other technology that's specific to your climate or your region. We're partnering with those contractors. So 
click the link in the description to request an appointment with us or with a vetted HVAC Dope Show contractor in your area. And so we hope you found this content helpful. And again, smash that like button for the algorithm and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It's a free way you can show support and it is much appreciated. And as promised earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now that YouTube thinks you should watch, as well as a video about heat pump efficiency ratings. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already, and we will catch you on the next episode.